You saw yesterday when we looked at those scriptures about the power and faith. That it was faith that gave action to the power. Though with this woman here you can see it. Daughter, Jesus said, thy faith has made thee whole. That power did flow out of him into her. She did receive. She was a, re a, a re recipient of that power. She knew when it went into her. So it must be tangible. It has to be transferable or transmittable. But it was her faith that did the transaction. Wasn't it? Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. We need to come to see, dear friends, that healing is in the same plan of God as is the new birth. You, you see, the power to save and to make you a new creature didn't just come that day you believed it. It's here all the time. It's when you believed it. It's your faith. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Amen. Paul said to the Philippian jailer, didn't he? I said, didn't he? I said, didn't he? You see, the... The, 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 the transforming power of God. You think about it. You talk about the power of God, brother. It's the power of God that makes you a new creature in Christ Jesus. That recreates you. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. A new creature. Paul said right to the church at Ephesus that we are created by God in Christ Jesus. It's the power of God that recreated our spirits. It's the power of God that made us new creatures. But it was your faith that gave action to that power. And without faith, there's no action to the power. While well, there's power in this room, there's power in this city, there's power on every street to save the world, every sinner. The worst wretch there is. I mean power to transform them. Make them, you see, transform them from a criminal into a saint. Thank God. Hallelujah. We, we, we see that. We see that. We, we, in, our, in our ministry here, you see, we have a prison ministry. We don't say a lot about it, but we have a prison ministry. Oh, thank God for the prison ministry. And we have hundreds of people on our list. And many of them take the correspondence course. We have almost 10,000 people taking the correspondence course. And, and many prisoners. Out of Leavenworth Prison. We've had four come out of there that are now in the ministry. Now in the ministry. Full-time ministry. Praise God forevermore. We had one young man came here to school, graduated from Raymond. Out, ordained minister. Now then he's got a full pardon from his state. But he shot and killed a policeman full of dope. Don't even remember doing it. Just a teenager, 18 years old, 19 years old, something like that. Killed, dead, a policeman. Well, he's putting a penitentiary for life. Wonder, you know, if the death penalty had been enforced in those days, it probably put him in a electric chair. But there in the penitentiary found Jesus. Methodist minister. United Methodist pastor. St. Paul's United Methodist Church. In Conroe, Texas. Man filled with the Holy Ghost. Goes around to Huntsville Penitentiary down Texas and has a Bible study. Taking my books in there. This young man got a hold of the Faith Bible's study book, the big blue book. Not, not only saved, transformed, baptized, the Holy Ghost. He wrote me ahead of time, said, I'm coming out. They laughed at him. Well, you don't get on on furlough, you know, a parole the first time it comes up, you know, when you killed a policeman. Oh, he said that fellow, he told that parole board, the fellow that killed that policeman's dead. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. I don't want to kill anybody. I'm not going to kill anybody. He's not out killing people. He's out getting them saved today. They've given him a full pardon since then. We helped him and the pastor, for with whom he's associate pastor, helped him. And they, they granted him a full pardon. But what? Well, isn't that power? That will transform a dope addict and a murderer into a saint of God. Hallelujah. That's power, isn't it? But it's his faith that received that power. It's his faith that put that power to work in his life, that made him a new creature. My brother, sister, the healing power of God is the same. It's in the same plan of God. Daughter, daughter, Jesus said, your faith, thy faith has made thee whole. Now you see, the reason people don't have faith for healing, I can do for salvation, hadn't been preached. 
It hadn't been preached. Just one side of it's been preached. And, and they've always heard that, so it's easy to believe that. But they've heard so much of the other stuff that it's hard for them to believe. That's the reason I said the healing power of God. I've seen it. I've laid hands on people. I've seen the power of God come. Sometimes they knock them back on the floor. Sometimes shake them like they had a hold of a, of a live wire. And that yet no real or final healing took place until something happened that released their faith. I will recount one incident and then we'll close for today. I was preaching in Beaumont, Texas in January of 1953. And here a lady brought her daughter. Between eight and nine years old, had polio when she was about three years old. Never walked another step. Encased in braces. She carried that eight-year-old girl in her arms with those braces into the healing line. I'm sitting in a chair on the platform laying hands on folks. I took the child in my hands and held her. I laid my hand on that little old limb, you know, and no fear around that, just bone and skin. I felt that power going into her. Oh, my heart went in. My, my little girl then, my daughter that's now, you know, much older than that, and a mother herself. And, and, and she uh, was at that same age at that time. Identically the same age, about eight or nine. And I thought, what if that's my daughter? I learned by speaking to the woman that it's her only child. Her only child. I just had one daughter. One boy and one girl. And I thought, oh God. And I said to the congregation, what if this was your child? Reach your hand with compassion. Reach your hand with faith out toward this child. See, we ought to all get involved on this. It oughtn't just be Brother Hagin. Oh, no, no, no. Read again there in James, the fifth chapter. He said, Pray ye one for another that you may be healed. Didn't he? I said, didn't he? Pray ye. He's writing to the whole church. Pray ye one for another. One for another that you may be healed. We ought to all get involved. I said, reach to the congregation. Reach your hand in faith. Reach your hand in compassion out towards this little child, this girl. What if it was your child, polio stricken? There seemed to be no immediate change, but I, oh, I had such a strong anointing. I said to the mother, I don't know everything, but I know this. The Lord told me in the vision that when you, when that power leaves your hand and go into them, you know they're healed. That is, as far as God is concerned, it's done. I said, if it'll help you any, I'll say this to you. I had a stronger anointing in ministering to this child than I have anybody in this whole meeting. That anointing went into that child's limb and into her body. Well, I never tell people to take their braces off or get up out of a chair or anything unless the Lord particularly leads me. Sometimes he tells me to. Or sometimes you'll just have an inward intuition. But if I don't, I just, you know, leave them on their own. It's not, it's not according to my faith. Jesus didn't say to this woman, Woman, daughter, my faith, Jesus' faith, my faith has made you holy. He didn't say that. He said your faith did it, didn't he? And so I had no, 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 no further leading. I just handed the child back to the mother and she took her in her arms and went back to her pew. We finished the healing line. They went home. Ten o'clock service the next morning. Pastor come running up to, uh, to my, where I was stayed there. And, and I was in the bathroom shaving. And, and I could hear his voice, you know, and I knew he was quite excited about something. He said, Brother, hey, Brother, you know the lady's there last night with the little child with polio and all the braces and all? Yeah, well, she's out there. The braces off the child's well. She had her to testify. He had the woman to testify. Then that night, same thing. The, the, the girl walked up and down the aisles and all around where everybody could see her. That little limb, you see, had grown to the same size as the other. And, and all that, but it's several inches short. It, it was just as long and just as big around as the other limb. Well, the mother said, you were, how many of you here were last night? I guess 90% of the crowd lifted their hand. She said, well, you saw then what happened, what Brother Hagin said, and so on. My husband and I went home. The time we got home, the child was asleep. Because, you know, up late, you know. So I just put her to bed and put her to sleep. I got up this morning and got my husband off to work. And then about 8 o'clock, she is still asleep. Usually that's what we're doing. She's, because even though she is between 8 and 9, she's never gone to school because she can't walk. And said, uh, I just let her sleep. And so uh, I went uh, by, it's usually my custom, about 8 o'clock every morning I, I give her a bath. And, and I, uh, that's the only time I remove her braces when I put her in the bathtub. So I drew up the bath water. Then I went into her bedroom and awakened her. Picked her up and carried her into the bathroom. Removed her night clothes. Took off the braces. She's not any better. Not any better. 
I put her into the bathtub. No, she's eight years of age because of the crippled condition I have.